good evening welcome you all to the third successful day of the madhura dhwani madras day celebrations the past two days have been amazing with the uh, wonderful talks by uh, first one was uh, civil aviation in madras by k r n arsaya and then uh, venkatesh followed it with by uh, talk on n s krishnan uh, yesterday uh, justice prabha sri devan just entertained us with uh, uh, chudamani writer a talk on writer chudamani it was, which was very warm and uh, hearty and uh, we had uh, vijay kumar deliver a talk on madras and idol thieves and today we have a, a special guest to deliver a, a talk on temples around chennai i am to introduce someone who doesn't need an intro at all think about it she has got a fan club and that too for heritage talks we know how difficult it is to pull audience for heritage subjects and uh, she has this uh, you know uh, an act to uh, attract her audience i have seen people enter uh, tatvaloka or wherever she delivers a talk uh, and without even bothering to know what topic it is if it is chitra madhavan people will just get into the hall and uh, i should also tell this about her audience such a quiet and disciplined audience uh, she has got many of whom, many of whom reach the venue much before her and uh, listen to her with such a devotion she has got that uh, uh thing to attract the audience as a custom a small formal introduction about her she has done her doctorate in ancient history and archaeology and the rest is history right <laughs> she has published <laughs> quite a, quite a few books on uh, history and culture of tamil nadu temples of kanchipuram vishnu temples of south india are some of them her books are very crisp and informative and it's a great guide for people who want to visit the temples she had uh, compiled books on sri rangam and uh, kanchipuram varadaraja permal koil uh, which are again uh, great documentation works she has been teaching at various institutions as a guest faculty she conducts heritage tours that are eagerly expected by many of her fans i have seen people picking up interest in uh, some of the temples after listening to her talking ivanga sonnaanga and edathla and the in the selaya patti avanga in the talk la sonnaanga apdin sollite and the koyilukku visit pannavanga la enakku nariya per theriyum like something like a padal petra stalam nalla chitra madhavan pechu petra stalam ma sila koyila it is it is no exaggeration i'm telling you it's not at all an exaggeration uh, today she is going to deliver us on uh, talk on temples around chennai which is going to be a treat for us again uh, you all can you know it's, it's doable now we can go and visit them after the talk uh, so without uh, much taking your time i request uh, chitra madhavan to come and deliver the talk and enthral the audience thank you can i request to the lights to be switched on a very good evening to all of you namaskaram at the outset my heartfelt thanks to mr r k for inviting me here to be part of the madras day celebrations thank you vallabha <laughs> for that introduction i asked her to make it i requested her to make it very crisp and simple but yeah she uh, <laughs> thank you so hmm, the topic of today's lecture is temples in and around uh, chennai around is uh, relative we don't know which is around everything is around so i'm going to go back and forth a little i'm not going to go in any particular order no chronological order uh, we are going to go in every which direction and in every which century all right so we are now going to george town from here we are going to a vishnu temple it's called the venu gopala krishna swami temple hardly anyone goes here it's in a place called muttayal pet and it is uh, in a street which is called 
Krishnan Koil Street because of this temple. And it's also called Pavadakaran Teru, Coral Merchant Street, a very famous one. So, you know, if we come to think of it, we have lots of Vishnu temples in and around Chennai, plenty of them. But how many of them are actually Krishna temples? Very few. Because you have Parthasarthi Swami here, right in front of us, grand, grand Divya Desham, he's there as uh, Arjuna's Parthas Sarathi. But how many more Krishna, Krishna temples do we have? Not many, I'm afraid. Rama temples are, I think, far more than Krishna temples. But this is one such. I can't put an exact day to it. This is the Utsava Murti. His name is Kannan. You see, in Vishnu temples, unlike in Shivalayams, many a time, the Moolavar, the main image, the stone image has a different name and the Utsava Murti has a different name. For example, we say Parthasarathi Swami temple. I don't know how many of us understand that Parthasarathi is the Utsuva Murti and the Moolavar is Venkata Krishna. But the name takes its, uh, the name of the temple is after the Utsuva Murti. Here, the Utsuva is Kannan and the Moola Murti is Venu, Krish, Venu Gopala Krishna Swami. Now, I don't have an image of the Moola Vigraham simply because they don't allow photography in many temples of the main image in worship. But uh, this is on a pillar in the mantapam. Uh, we need to look at the sculptures on the pillars in the main mantapam of temples because more often than not, they contain a sculpture of the main image. Just in case you don't know how the main image looks and there were times when people were not allowed inside the main sanctum, if you are able to identify how the main image is, you notice that he will be sculpted on a pillar in the mantapam mm, most times. Now, for example, I am just giving you an example. If you go to the Nitya Kalyana Peramal temple in Thiruvidandai on East Coast Road and you see the Varaha, Mu Varaha inside, he will be turned to this side. There will be an exact replica on the pillar of the 16 pillar mantapam on the outside of the temple. Once we start noticing it, we will start noticing it. So here uh, you have Krishna, just as he is in the main sanctum, Venu Gopala, of course, with a cow behind him, exactly like this. And uh, he is standing with his legs crossed, but he is not just holding a flute in two lower hands, he also has the Shanka Chakra. Such images <coughs> uh, in technical parlance are called Madana Gopala. Not many people know that there is a temple for Madana Gopala Swami in the heart of uh, Madurai. In the heart, in the core of Madurai, not many people go there. It's a Vijayanagar Nayak period temple belonging to the 16th century. And he is like this in the main sanctum. Shankar Chakra bearing, flute bearing, Madana Gopala. And that's the name of the temple. Here, of course, they have called it Venu Gopala Krishna Swami Temple. Incidentally, in that mod I know I'm going this way and that, but... I need to. The mantapam of that Madana Gopala Swami temple in Madurai is now in the Philadelphia Museum, incidentally. So, this back back to this uh, Georgetown temple. So, this is how Madana Gopala is in the main sanctum. But there is a small, uh, nice feature that we need to note here. Do you see that the flute is not exactly on the lips of Sri Krishna here? It's held a little lower. That also you can find in many temples, not literally playing on it. But though it is not clearly seen in this culture, if you go into the main sanctum and look closely, you will find that even the fingers of Krishna have not closed the holes of the flute, which means that he is not playing on it. He is just holding it and he is holding it slightly lower than his face. So he is holding the flute and not playing it. Nevertheless, he will be called Venu Gopala, that is Krishna with the flute. It doesn't matter whether he is playing it or not. So let's just go for a moment to Hampi, the capital of ancient Vijayanagara. I can't give a lecture without talking about Hampi. So this is the logo of the Vijayanagara emperors. We'll cross the river and we'll go to the Hazara Rama temple. Uh, it's It was called the Ramachandra temple. Uh, it is a part of the world heritage site today. No, no puja is conducted there. There you have a series of Krishnas. And these are the Krishnas that you see everywhere, but so beautifully sculpted in this particular shrine. So this is Krishna tied to the trees and, you know, he, 
Damodara he is called, Damodara, with the rope around his waist. This is a little baby crawling Krishna. You have here Kalinga Nartana Krishna. You have Navanita Nartana Krishna dancing with a butter ball Navanitam in his hand. Then here you have a Krishna with the flute, Venu Gopala. Here also he has it uh, not on his lips but lower, but with Adhisesha on his head, clearly indicating that he is Vishnu over here. Here you have Madana Gopala himself, Shankar Chakra, Venu bearing Krishna. And then look at this. You have again Shankar Chakra, Venu bearing Krishna with Rukmini and Satyabhama. Then you have this was four hands. Now you have eight hands, Shankar, Chakra, various other weapons, Rukmini, Satyabhama and the cows. So these many types are Venugopala Swami in this uh, Georgetown temple belongs to this type. Alright. So here obviously uh, if it's Venugopala, the goddess Lakshmi has to be Rukmini and uh, he is over here. She is over here. So this is how the temple looks. Very, very crowded space on the outside. And all these high-rise buildings have come up all around. But we will concentrate on this uh, temple. You have the uh, a temple that is very much in active worship. You have the Dwajastambam over here, the flag post. And then over here you have a Deepastambam, which is uh, made of one piece of stone. I am not able to tell you the exact age of this temple. Mm. Perhaps it's 600, 700 years old. I don't know. Simply because, you see, mm, we have this uh, lovely tradition of wiping out all vestiges of antiquity by way of inscriptions, by way of sculptures, by way of architecture. Uh, there is no heritage consciousness. So I simply don't know how old this temple is. Anyway, this is a deeper stambam, not too old. These are all the... Uh, sculptures. I am taking you for a quick round of the temple where the Deepam was is now a house for uh, somebody there and then many sculptures. You have Hanuman, you have the Sudarshana Chakra on the base of this Deepastambam, Garuda and Vishnu's conch, the Panchajanya and all around the Deepastambam also, Dvajastambam also. You have on the pillars here the Matsya Avatara I have mentioned this many times before, but maybe there are some who, who for the, whom this may be new. Hmm, sculpting the Dashavatara on the pillars of a temple started from the Vijayanagara times, especially the Matsya and the Kurma Avataras, which you hardly see pre-Vijayanagara. These are not Vijayanagara, but copying that uh, tradition. Acharyas, Bhaktas, uh, probably Ramanuja Acharya over here. Uh, many devotees, siddhas perhaps, clowns, everything in the universe is here. Namarvar is here, the preeminent Arvar. Narsuma, rare one, standing with Jwala around his head to show how uh, fierce he is, how powerful he is. And left hand is blessing uh, on top of Prahalada's head uh, and Garuda over here. On either side of Narsuma, generally you see Garuda and Prahlada. This is the temple tank. Big tank looks like this. These photos were taken pre-pandemic. They are completely dry tank. I have no idea how it is now. Hopefully it's better. But then with these many high-rise buildings all around and bore wells being sunk, what do you expect? You know, we can't have any water there. But it's an oasis of peace inside the temple. You get out of the crowded road and you're completely, completely calm. So this is how the main sanctum looks. We all know that. Various sculptures of uh, various avatars of Vishnu. But I have to show this because we have to go through the temple premises. And that's how the main Vemanam looks. You have the a very beautiful Hamsavahanam over here. Generally it's brightly colored but over here it's nice and white as a Hamsa should be. And Hamsavahanam always takes on a special significance in a temple as are the sculptures of Hamsas, the rows of Hamsas which are called Hamsatara because we know that this was a bird, not a regular swan that we see which could take in milk and keep the milk element and spit out the water like we should keep the good in us and spit out water is not necessary like that's why with the great uh, saints the evolved souls were called Paramahamsa like Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and many other Vahanams are there 
So this is the base of uh, one of the Vahanams and very exquisitely carved, I might say. The entire universe is supposed to be held on the backs of eight elephants and many Nagas, according to Hindu scriptures. And Garuda, of course, must be there in all the four corners. We have the Kalpa Vriksha Vahanam as well in this temple. So Venugopala Krishna Swami temple, do you notice Patasarthi Swami over here. If you start identifying the sculptures, we can see many familiar things and Rukmini by his side. So, this is how we uh, go into the temple. It's a very small shrine. There is a Stala Briksham, traditionally, but unfortunately not seen today. It is a Punnai Maram, uh, Punnaga. Our Mailapur was a Punnai Vanam. Once upon a time, we've done away with that Vanam and one solitary Punnai tree inside the Shivan te Kapaleshwara temple. So, in this temple, that's also not there. But we must understand that the Punnai Maram was the Salavikshram of many, many Shiva and Vishnu temples, including the Trivikrama Perumal temple in Tirukoyulur and again the Nitya Kalyana Perumal temple in uh, Tiruvidandai. So, you know, we, you know, Salavikshams are there. But why are they there? Because there are so many uh, medicinal values attached to it. I am just going to read out a little bit, uh, a little extract from a book published by C. P. Ramasamy Iyer uh, Foundation and uh, authored by Mr. Amrita Lingam. See, the medicinal uses of the Punnai Maram, Punnaga in Sanskrit, leaf extract is used to soothe an eye sores and also to relieve giddiness and periodic attacks of headache. The juice of the bark is used for internal and external bleeding. The flowers are used for nervous disorders and also to reduce body temperature. These are some of the many uses of the Punnai tree. Very much in use in Ayurvedic medicine even today. So now we go to the Srinivasa Perumal temple in Egmore. It's a very small temple right here in Egmore but not many people know it's there. Egmore was called Erumur. It's called now Erumur. Erumur in Chola inscriptions of the 10th century. And it was the, see, they had uh, ancient uh, geographical divisions. They had Nad, Kotam, Valanad, etc., etc. So, this Egmore of today, Erumur, was in the geographical division called Erumur Nad, which was in Puliur Kotam, Kotam, Nad, etc. So, ancient, ancient part of uh, Chennai. This is uh, the Utsava Murti of Srinivasa Paramat. Again, not knowing how old this temple is, the goddess Lakshmi here is Padmavati Tayar, as it should be in any Srinivasa Paramal temple. But you, th this is the Utsava Murti of Rama. There's a Rama shrine also. What is interesting is that it is called the Srinivasa Paramal temple today. And when you go in, you have a large Murti of Srinivasa. But the original deity of this temple was Lakshmi Narayana. And as you are going into the main sanctum from the mantapa, the, the kind of vestibule that connects the mantapa to the main sanctum is in technical parlance called the uh, antarala. In, in there, in that passage, you have that ancient murti of Lakshmi Narayana. Interestingly, right next to the temple is a street which is called LNP Street. Nobody knows what that LNP stands for. It's Lakshmi Narayana Permal. So, that, that's why this is this was the ancient Lakshmi Narayana Perumal temple over here. Nothing much more to say about this. A new Gopuram is uh, over here. And this is in Erumbur. Just showing it because not many people know there is such a lovely Srinivasa Perumal temple in Erumbur. There is also another Srinivasa Perumal temple in Royapetta close to here, near the general hospital. That's also a wonderful temple, but since I've shown it in one of my uh, earlier lectures, I'm not showing it now. So, these are all stucco images that are here. This is how Srinivasa looks inside the main sanctum. I don't have a picture, photo of Lakshmi Narayana to show you. Small sanctum for Rama. Andal is also here. All the necessary sanctums um, meant for a Vishnu temple are over here. Dwajastambam in very, very active worship. Let's go a little out of Chennai. We are going to a place called Devadanam. This is um, near Minjur, not too far from here. Now, this word, why is it called Devadanam? In ancient times, when kings donated, they donated to scholars, they donated to uh, temples, etc. 
a donation of land given to scholars uh, or donation of land given to temples was called devadana so devadana that is given to the lord so there is a ranganatha swami temple over here and this is how ranganatha looks he is huge he is 5 feet in height and he is 18 feet long and he is not made of stone like the original ranganatha swami temple in sri rangam he is made of stucco so they therefore there is no abhishekam there is no tirumanjanam in vaishnava parlance for him instead the taila kapu is given anointment with uh, herbal oil is there <clears throat> you have brahma coming out from his navel you have shri devi and bhu devi at his feet and uh, he has you can see his right arm is underneath his head and the left arm is stretched out less like the main ranganatha swami temple and the island of shrirangam but there you don't have brahma coming out from his navel you don't have shri devi and bhu devi at his feet incidentally over here at the feet of ranganatha in this devadanam village though it is not seen in this photograph uh, you have hanuman anjaneya and a sage called thumburu near his feet so who is this thumburu you know when musicians sing they sing na thumburu narada gana vilolam so thumburu like narada was a sage and he was a musician like narada carried uh, veena thumburu carried an instrument carries an instrument called the atodya so the atodya is again a stringed instrument we don't have it today so we don't know how the atodya looks but in the famous kailasanatha temple in kanchipuram very famous kailasanatha temple that is under the archaeological survey of india uh, there are a string of titles of the person who sponsored the building of this temple king rajasimha and one of his titles was shri athodya thumburu he was like um, thumburu in the playing of athodya who this king so anyway so thumburu and athodya well connected and hanuman and thumburu are seen at the feet of ranganatha huge huge image over here this is the utsava murti i know i am uh, i'm i'm going off at a tangent i mean to go off at a tangent so we are going to this place called singavaram as i said distance is relative this is on route to tiruvannamalai it's very close to senji the fort of jinji why i'm showing this to you is in connection with ranganatha these many ranganatha shrines are there this is a 7th century cave temple belonging to the period of mahendra varman pallava cut deep into the rock in this village of singavaram you have to climb a bit and then uh, it is really dug into hard rock like this and uh, ranganatha here is also very 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 long maybe about 20 feet long clearly uh, made of stone i'm just telling you how because this temple is completely built up the singavaram temple i'm taking you to malakota trichy to show you how this temple would actually look this is a mahendra varman period cave temple hewn out of hard rock by cutting in and in the malakota cave temple you have shiva inside coming back to singavaram this is the utsava murti you have other deities also kept here later this is varadaraja perumal this is lakshmi as perun devi thayar lots of other this is goddess durga old one this belongs to the time of mahendra varman pallava you have to climb like this and what they did in the 7th century all these steps wouldn't have been there they climbed up and then all this is modern but right at the center digging into very very hard rock they have created that ranganatha and this is the beautiful view from the top of that singavaram uh, ranganatha swami temple so beneath that vimanam that you see over there it's not a gopuram that is a vimanam on top of the main shrine the main shrine is inside the rock itself now mahendra varman created mahendra varman marman asked asked his architects and sculptors to create this cave temple for ranganatha in the 7th century in singavaram not knowing that in the 14th century the ranganatha of shri rangam the utsava murti who was taken out of the temple for 48 years because of the attack of mahamad bin tughlaq was going to find his sanctuary in this temple so it so happened that by that time the vijayanagara rulers had come 
and there was a general army general called gopanna governor of senji and he took the trouble of finding out where that image of ranganatha was the utsava murti was taken he was up in uh, tirumala in the hills there in the forest he took that image of ranganatha the utsava murti that's called alhiya manavalan brought it to senji kept him here safely took his army to sri rangam ousted the invaders made the temple ready for the arrival of the utsava murti and bu devi and sri devi and got him back over there safely such a great effort and that's why i'm showing you singa the singavaram temple just to show you that there's a ranganatha here there's a small column on top as well all this is there and then you're climbing up so in a place called adi tiruvarangam which is close to um tirukoyilur vilapuram tirukoyilur this is all i have but you can see how big that main deity is that's also ranganatha that's more than 22 feet long he is also made of stucco not granite and therefore for him also there is no tirumanjanam there is only the taila kap uh, putting sacred herbal oil on him and ranganayake tayar as well that we are in adi tiruvarangam this temple also one must know very far from chennai agree but uh, because i'm talking about the devana devadanam ranganatha perumal i'm also talking about other ranganathas just to show you this lovely gopuram is there vimanam is there and this temple like the sri rangam ranganatha swami temple also has a granary which luckily they are keeping very safe in those days the fields the land attached to the temple which were donated to the temple would yield a lot of grain and all that grain was given to the temple and it was put for safe keeping inside such granaries this is exactly how it looks inside the shrirangam temple as well so now we are back to devadanam this is how it looks so green in the middle of paddy fields but of course this photo was taken just prior to the pandemic i don't know everything changes so fast you know if you go there tomorrow and tell me it's not like this i'm not to blame so uh, this is the like that very very beautiful right in the middle so modern gopuram all right but we have a gopuram there and we go in and uh, this is how uh, the main image looks so you can see that he is not flat on the his adisesha there is something over here like a bolster that he is keeping his head on it's not a bolster not a pillow it's a maraka so ranganatha is here in devadanam is supposed to store grain in that and give it to the world so that is a tradition that's a tradition that's a traditional story in this temple so this is how we go in that is the vimanam up up there the it see in south indian temples a gopuram has a certain shape and the vimanam above the main sanctum is usually round so we are able to identify the two very clearly in some temples like this and in the singavaram temple the vimanam of the main sanctum looks like a gopuram but depending on where it is we know whether it is a vimanam or whether it is a gopuram this is how this is huge mantapam is there tayar goddess lakshmi here is called ranganayake naturally if it's ranganatha it has to be ranganayake but there is something unusual over here generally i told you in a vishnu temple the main image is called by one name the utsava murti is called by another name but not for lakshmi lakshmi the main uh, deity has a name the utsava murti has the same name here she is ranganayake the main stone image and the utsava murti is rangavalli it's a nice nice name it's a unique name and just like in the sri rangam uh, temple the pada the the feet of lord ranganatha are seen on the outer wall of the main sanctum so this is how this temple is in active worship with all the festivals all the rituals everything going on so if you go there you will see him with his hand on this maraka uh, garuda etc now we go to a place called pulikundram going from one end to the other we are just trotting off everywhere so pulikundram is very close to tirukalukundram you all know of the famous tirukalukundram where the two eagles used to come and all that that is an ancient ancient temple 
and at ground level in Tirukkalkundram you have the Bhakta Vatsaleshwara temple that's also very ancient it's a Padal Petrasthalam Sundar Muthi Nayanar came there about 3 kilometers from Tirukkalkundram you have this Lakshmi Narayana Perumal Kovil in a place called Puli Kundram Puli it should be Puli it's not tiger but it's tamarind it's a small hillock of tamarind but really there's no great hillock around so this is Lakshmi Narayana over here it's hardly older than 400 years they, the, the priests don't tell us that it's 1500 10,000 5000 years old they clearly tell us that it's only 400 years old and it is said that people migrated from a place called Vangipuram in Andhra Pradesh and they came here and they settled down and they built this uh, temple a uh, very modern construction doesn't even mm, show you that it's 400 years old except perhaps for this deeper stambam over here which is of one pillar of it's a monolithic uh, pillar and that shows some vestiges of antiquity this is how Lakshmi Narayana Perma looks inside generally we see temples for Lakshmi Narsuma Narsuma with Lakshmi on his left lap Lakshmi Narayana not that common but he is there over here the main Vimanam that's the deepest thumb now we uh, come back to Chennai we come to Chindadri Pete there are uh, three temples here there are Adi Purishwara temple um, uh, then you have the Vishnu temple next to it which we'll come to and a small Vinayakar temple next to that also the Adi Purishwara temple and the Adi Keshava Paramal temple which are next to each other are actually called twin temples they are not very old at all and uh, they were this Chintatri Pete itself um, was created by a person who is a governor of Chennai during the days of the British Raj he was George Morton Pitt he founded Chintatri Pete in 1734 as a weaver settlement Chennai Tari Pete I got this from Mr. S. Mutaya's book it's not my own research at all uh, Adiyappa Narayana Chetti a Dubash a Dubash a Dubash is an anglicized form of Dvibashi one who could speak the native language and English of the East India Company sponsored the construction of the Shiva and the Vishnu temples here and a very small uh, Vinayaka temple also all three are there right next to each other in the Chindadri Pete temple uh, this is obviously not a very old temple at all uh, but some of the pillars here are styled according to the Vijayanagara uh, architecture not Vijayanagara but it's like that so this is the Vimanam nothing much to say about this at all only thing is the annual festival the Brahmotsavam of every temple is only for 10 days 9 or 10 day festival is the Brahmotsavam in the Mannarbudi Rajagopala Swami temple it's for 18 days that's very rare here in this Sadi Purishwara temple it's for 15 days again that's something very rare it never goes beyond 10 days even in our Kapali temple it doesn't go beyond 10 days so this is the Vimanam over here and uh, there is nothing very great about this temple the sacred tree is the Kadamba Maram Kadamba or Kadamba this is like the Meenakshi temple in Madurai Kadamba Vana Nilaye Bhavani is what uh, they sing about her that was a famous see everywhere you have a particular sacred tree rest assured that there was a forest of those trees over there like there was a Punnai Maram here there was a Kadamba Vanam over there anyway this would not have been a forest but the Kadamba Maram this is not the Kadamba Maram it was over oh, the sacred tree of this temple again in very very active worship I like this uh, Dwajastambam very much you know generally when you see the Dwajastambam you see the image of Ganesha and Subramanya embossed on it here it actually stands out it's very beautifully crafted very beautifully done see that it seems to be, have been kept separately uh, leaning on the Dwajastambha this is a very excellent sculpture of Shiva and Parvati Uma Maheshwara riding on the Rishabha very well done and Muruha of course standing on his peacock and the peacock Vahanam this temple has it all the Yana Vahanam everything is in place here on the ceiling here and I'll show you to you um, I'll show you a better photograph in the Adikeshwar Perumal temple in Chindadri Pitta. this is next to the Adi Purishwara temple is the Adikeshwar Perumal temple uh, it has a Motta Gopuram it has not been completed it is a modern Gopuram 
it goes like the Dwajastambham here again is very tall that is the main Vimanam that you see over there and uh, once all the, all the many many sculptures on the Vimanam generally we don't look up so I'm showing you a close up as we get into the temple as we go into the Mantapa if we look up there is this beautiful carving. I'm afraid it's not a good photograph because I took it on the sly. They were telling me not to take photographs, but I just had to take this. So it's really not good. Here, uh, you can see the Dashavatara, but they are not in order. You see Narsuma here, you see Vamana here, you see Rama there, you see Matsya here, you see Kurma here. So it goes, goes around. You have upside down, Kani Ganathana Krishna here well worth going into this temple and standing and staring after all this is only a few hundred years old but the workmanship is still there it has been done excellently on the ceiling by somebody who was lying down on his back on a scaffolding and carving up there we must think of the efforts of these sculptors stone, stone granite granite okay so this is Adi Lakshmi the sanctum for Thayar Adi Lakshmi is over here typical tayar. One thing this temple has is the Swarga Vasal or the Vaikunta Vasal. Usually many small small temples don't have it but this has it over here. Opened only during the Vaikunta Ekadeshi festival. The Marhari Utsavam is celebrated in a grand scale in this little temple in one corner of Chindadripet. Sculptures of many donors are also here. Hmm. Then we have the uh, you have the Adi Purishwarar you have the Adi Keshwa Paramal and you have the Adi Vinayakar temple, small temple but this was also built with the money given by the Dubash. That's sitting in one corner and all high rise buildings having come around. Now we'll go this side, we'll go to Mangad as the name suggests. It was a forest of uh, mango trees. The mango tree still remains the Stalavriksham of the Kamakshiyaman temple over there. Uh, there are three temples again close to each other the Kamakshi Aman temple in Mangade, the Velishwara Swami temple and the Vaikuntanatha temple they are all very very close to each other and the Stala Puranams of one one is connected with the Stala Puranam of the other it's a package so here uh, we, we are going into the Kamakshi Aman temple first and the story goes the Stala Puranam goes that at one point of time uh, Shiva and Parvati were, uh, were on Kailash and uh, Shiva uh, cursed Parvati to come down on earth just like the story of the Kapalishwara temple she came here and she performed uh, penance to be reunited with Shiva standing on tiptoe in the middle of five fires so this is called the Panchagni Tapas it is also connected with uh, uh, other temples in Tamil Nadu but here it is very well known so she was standing on tiptoe and performed the Panchagni Tapas. Shiva was very pleased with her penance and he came down to be reunited with her. But at the same time, in the same place in Mangade, Shukran, the planet Shukran, uh, uh, was also performing penance to God Shiva because he had been blinded in one eye. You remember that Mahabali episode, Vamana, Trivikrama episode? So there. So he came over here performing penance to God Shiva. So Shiva came over here and he first blessed uh, Shukran and since she, he couldn't bless Parvati at the same time he told her to go and perform penance in Kanchipuram which she did and this story is connected with the Kamak, famous Kamakshiyaman temple in Kanchipuram also and they were united so this is the famous Kamakshiyaman uh, temple over here uh, unique uh, feature is the Utsava Murti uh, which I am sorry I don't have a good photograph standing on tiptoe in the middle of five fires. You can never see a, a sculpture like this. This is amazing with one hand above her head, long hair, etc. This, this is the best photo I could get. And the inscription th th in this temple mentioned that the name of ancient name of goddess Kamakshi Aman was Avudaya Nachiyar. Nachiyar is generally, Nachiyar means lady or goddess in Tamil. It is generally connected with Vishnu temples. Uh, you have Anjulavali Nachiyar, this Nachiyar, that Nachiyar. But see, in I have said this before and I wish to say this again. The terms and terminologies that we use today are very different from what was used in the past. Today we are using the word Perumal for Vishnu. 
we won't even think of using it for god shiva but there are some inscriptions to that effect also and when we say arvar today we are only thinking of the 12 arvars namarvar andal etc in those days the suffix arvar was attached to vishnu all right so these are very strange things even now today we say chakra tarvar the vaishnava terminology for uh, sudarshana uh, the um, discus of vishnu so things have changed over time and uh, this kamakshi in this temple in mangada was called avadiya nachiyar mangada again inscriptions there are still some inscriptions in all three temples mangada was situated in puliyur kotam the same puliyur kotam that i mentioned in that other context alayas kulotunga chola balanadu again another bigger subdivision was jayangonda chola mandalam all this was part of the vast territory of the cholas this chennai also came under the cholas initially under the pallavas then under the cholas then under the pandyas then under vijayanagar then under some sultan so many things have happened even in the place that we are now in our case center a uh, vijayanagara unique vijayanagara inscription in the mangada temple clearly mentions that the land in mangada was not to be sold to outsiders how do you like that they wanted to keep that land within themselves and the, all that is completely gone now there is also a pandian period inscription dated 1256 of an emperor called jatavarman sundara pandya our history books teaches nothing we only hear raja 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 we even forget rajendra i mean this this is the kind of history that we learn <coughs> jatavarman sundara pandya was one of the greatest pandya kings ever his empire extended from kanyakumari up to nellur and he was he was a grand grand king who gave gold and more gold and more more gold to the sri rangam and the nataraja temple in chidambaram such a grand king uh, such a generous king anyway <coughs> it is uh, there is also shri chakra pratishta in this kamakshi amman temple it is said to have been done by no less a person than adi shankara himself that is according to the stala puranam of this temple so anyway uh, this is i show you the kamakshi amman temple unfortunately much modernized and again the stucco sculptures that you modern sculptures that you see at the entrance to a temple also give you much of the story that is shiva being united with parvati uh this is the main vimanam of this temple it's not in excellent condition all kinds of modern structures have come around over here these are some of the sculptures on some of the pillars this is uh nandikeshwara over here typical this is uh, the gajar kesari a lion and a elephant typical sculpture again of a cow pouring milk over the linga dancers all this is gone we don't even know what this was sorry some of my pictures are not very good in this temple uh you have vishnu over here ganesha in active worship devotees modern everything that's modern <laughs> you can find in a chola era temple never mind at least in a, it's an active worship so this is how modern it gets huge temple tank bone dry very big temple tank and uh, these are the guardians of our kamakshi amman temple it was under renovation when i went there these are some of the inscriptions that have been left behind but with so much cement over it we can hardly read it so we go to the velishwara swami temple over here close by this is again part of the mango forest that was there in puliyur kotam kulotunga chola valanadu jayangonda chola mangalam the lingam in the main sanctum is worshiped as velishwara i'll just read this out to you according to the stala puranam same thing goddess parvati came here and shukran belli uh, was also worshiping over here so this is the way to the velishwaran shrine again a very ancient temple there are chola inscriptions here mango tree is the celebration here also the sacred temple tank is called chakra teertham alhiya chola nallur was another name of mangada you can again see uh, parvati doing tapas over here it's a nice combination of a vishnu temple a shiva temple and a shakti temple over here so that is the marriage of shiva and parvati taking place many sculptures dakshinamurti 
Divinadara Dakshinamurti, not the most excellent of uh, sculptures, but yes, that's the Vimana. Parvati worshipping the Shivalinga. Ekapada Murti, Shiva seen with just one leg over here. This is Ekapada Trimurti. Uh, I think many of you may already know this, but it's worth an explanation. In Shiva temples, and one of the best examples is in the Tiruvatiyur temple, you have Shiva with one leg, with Vishnu branching off on one side and Brahma on the other, just to show the unity of Godhead. But this being a Shiva temple, Shiva assumes the predominant position, Bhairava of course, and all these architectural designs which are part of every ancient temple. All these are only vestiges of uh, ancient architecture that we find among the three temples, uh, Veldishwaran, Kamakshi and the Vaikuntha Permar. These are some inscriptions again. Luckily, there till today. Then these will also disappear, <laughs> one doesn't know. Um, the Another lingam there is called Kashi Vishwanathar, Kashi Vishalakshi, many, many more. Vinayaka shrines, all modern. But please remember that the uh, Ambal temple and the Shivan temple are actually very, very ancient and they originally belong to the Chola period, if not uh, more ancient. Virabhadra, Virabhadra Swami is that god here over here whom you can clearly identify with Daksha with a goat's head standing next to him an Amsha of uh, Shiva he was mm -hmm. having come out of the body of Shiva when Shiva was grief stricken at the death of his wife Dakshayani Veerabhadra shrines became extremely pop popular from the 15th century onwards and one such shrine uh, of a much later date is in this Veleshwaran temple it has a very nice very beautiful Nandavanam also and here is these are all roll numbers, I think, of uh, children wanting to pass their exams. Or uh, are they, I don't know. I think that's what they are. The hall Oh, hall ticket number. Okay, thank you. So, then the, this is again quite old of uh, Shiva as Lingod Bhavamurti. You all know Brahma went up in the form of a swan and Vishnu in the form of a boar. And Brahma on one side and Vishnu on one side worshipping him. We must tell these children that they will definitely fail in their exams if they <laughs> tarnish a temple. I mean, that's one effective way to stop it. So, Subramanya Swami, modern shrines, this Parani Andavar over here, all these are part of the Veldeshwaran Swami temple. So, quickly before I run out of time, we are going into the Vaikuntha Permal temple over here. The original name, according to the inscription still found in the temple was... Uh, Kali Keshari Vishnu Griham. That was what this temple was called. He is seen in the main shrine with Sri Devi and uh, Bhu Devi. This is how the entrance to the Vaikuntha Vasa Permal temple looks. Uh, I don't have an image naturally of the Moolavar to show you. What uh, they have not shown in this image is that the chakra of the main image is not like this. It is like this. That is the Prayoga chakra that is in use. And in the hand of uh, Vishnu, you will find a ring. The ring that he came came to give to his sister, Kamakshi, when she was to be married to... Ah, this is a better image. Note the Prayoga Chakra. That is not flat, but it is turned, ready to be hurled. And this is the ring that he has in his right hand, going to give to his sister at the time of her marriage. And uh, oh, very awful this is, but it's very modern. This is Ganga and Yamuna on either side. As you know, as you go into a Gopuram, the goddesses are there with the water flowing. So we cleanse ourselves physically, mentally and then get into the temple. Uh, Tumburu here is waiting for us and Matanugopala and the various uh, avatars of Vishnu and we go into the Vaikuntha Permal temple. The goddess here is Kanakavali Thayar. A Chola inscription has been discovered on the base of the north wall of the central shrine in the Vaikuntha Permal temple belongs to the reign of Rajendra Chola of the 11th century. It records the gift of 90 sheep to goats for maintaining a perpetual lamp at the Kalikesari Vishnu Griham in Mangade, alias Arahiya Chola Nallur, clearly over there. Again, so much uh, needless to say, modernization has take, taken place. This is Vishwaksena, the leader of the army of Vishnu. He is there in almost every Vishnu temple, only we don't recognize him. So, that is the Vaikuntha Vasa Permal, Vaikuntha Permal temple for you. Krishna killing Putana. Many, many 
new images as well all the rakshasas all the rakshasas that krishna killed are there high up on the vimanam uh, sanctum for sudarshana chakra tarvar all right so uh, kanakavali tayar as i said is enshrined in a separate sanctum in mangad we'll keep going and uh, now we go to velacheri we'll quickly finish with velacheri we are going into the yog we yog velacheri is one of the most ancient suburbs of chennai it was there in the pallava period and the chola period you have the famous dandishwara temple so shiva temple with chola inscriptions as well not many people however know that there is a vishnu temple in velacheri is the yoga narsimha permal temple over there yoga narsimha swami temple and uh, over here velacheri Be- is supposed to have had the name veda shreni it was supposed to have been a chaturvedi mangalam peopled with uh, scholars conversant in the four vedas all that has disappeared so narsimha swami faces west this was a very ancient temple it was in a very decrepit condition it has come back to life luckily the main deity is a huge one yoga narsimha in the yogic posture with his hands resting on his knees what is very interesting is the processional image of vishnu standing with sri devi and bhudevi is called bhakta vatsala parmal all that people notice but there is one more grand grand utsava murti in this uh, temple it's called veda narayana parmal he is an eye catching image with a prayoga chakra in all likelihood this bronze image would belong to the pallava period which means that this temple itself originally would have been a pallava era temple and then of course um, other dynasties took over Temp- this was this is the uh, original uh, image don't ask me how i got it they say the rishi moolam navi moolam la kekka kudad na and mari don't ask me how i got these <laughs> photographs so this is the narsimha in active worship and uh, the thai or lakshmi over here we go from the yoga Nar- there are there are some inscriptions also in the yoga narsimha temple i'll just read that out to you because we should know the importance of inscriptions a few ancient and historical inscriptions one of the 10th and another of the 12th century of the chola times have been found over here unfortunately some of them are damaged the earliest inscription of the 10th century belongs to the reign of gandaraditya chola who was a great grandfather of rajaraja chola now that we are all conversant with ps1 and 2 some of chola history come and we can relate to gandaraditya chola so the last temple over here is uh, in tenampet in vanier tenampet off eldams road this is a again a venugopala swami temple it's so tiny that you step off the main sanctum into the main into the road itself it is that tiny it's very very small but really worth visiting they say the temple authorities say it's 600 years old we don't know we really don't know but we do know that uh, in the vijayanagara times temples for krishna became very popular that also literally off the street into the garbagraha out of the garbagraha into the street this is uh, venugopala with uh, shankar chakra that's all there is uh, to this temple the processional image here is called shrinivasa perumal incidentally there's a draupadi amman ancient draupadi amman shrine next to this temple and next to this it's called krishna swami perumal this deity and uh, right next to it is a temple for hanuman this is new only absolutely no doubt but right in the middle of one year tenambet you just have to take a left off uh, eldams road as you are going from alwarpet to mount road and you will find this temple right there so this brings me to the end of my lecture and just to tell you this is the utsav murti of this uh, temple small small shrine that's all you have this is the temple and we'll end with this there's a hanuman sitting right up over there in every nook and corner of chennai literally in every street in every lane in every by lane there's some temple what we think of is entirely modern maybe a very ancient shrine could be in fact in velacheri there's a shrine for saptamatrikas it looks so the seven mothers brahmi maheshwari chamundi etc etc it looks so very modern but it has a cho- had sorry a chola inscription so we know that all these temples they may be new new in indian context is like a few hundred years old when some countries don't even have that much of history 
but uh, if we try to find out you know something about the inscription something about the sculpture somewhere somewhere you can find out that it was an ancient temple at some point of time makes us so proud to be in the city where it is brimming with culture music and dance and architecture sculpture inscriptions it's only our prayer a sincere prayer that these be kept intact before we lose all of it at some point of time because of mindless repair work mindless reconstruction it's completely mindless because we seem to lack a heritage consciousness thank you thank you very much thank you madam she is talking all these temples as though we are visiting these temples regularly if she talks about kapali or parsar temple i can understand the way she is so fluent with all this i have heard about three four temples only i do not know much more of so many of them so nicely you have delivered thank you so much she has been a regular speaker here every year after year and whenever i message her giving my date and probable time immediately she will accept she will come and deliver here it's a pleasure that you have done this uh, talk <laughs> seeing this crowd the uh, this last uh, three days the uh, six lectures have attracted a good crowd but this is the maximum there's a lot as i can say <laughs> and uh, we also do this basically a place where we have more co music concerts than this type of talks anyway we also have i conduct week one week talk during the season between 25th and 31st she has given couple of times talks i think this time i should work with you and you have come out with uh, uh, sri veli putur and uh, another kanji brahm right two books have come whether we can make something common and make a concert you know one program during the december just for information at once and uh, it's a pleasure uh, after this there is another beautiful program that is going to take place those people who can stay please stay back it's my pleasure to hand over yes momentum to her